Hotel workers in cities across the United States and Canada, from Hawaii to New York, have begun a movement. It is a struggle for equality in the workplace. They call their movement Hotel Workers Rising. It is a movement for equality. The middle class was built on the foundation of good manufacturing jobs. Few people remember that those good jobs weren't always good. The dirty, dangerous sweatshop jobs that exploited immigrants who were forced to live in squalor. The men and women who toiled at those jobs organized themselves into unions. They sat down, they struck, they were beaten, and they won. Equality. Much of our national debate has focused on the loss of manufacturing jobs to other countries. No one questions the importance of that debate, but the economy has changed in the last 50 years. 80% of our jobs today are in the service sector, so it falls to those workers and to each of us to answer one question. Will those jobs become middle-class jobs or remain this generation's version of sweatshop jobs? Jobs with no hope, no future, no way out. As the service sector of the economy has grown, so has poverty. In the first four years of George Bush's presidency, the percentage of people living in poverty has grown to 12%. Today, 37 million people in the United States live below the poverty line, and Canada is heading in the same direction. Perhaps more importantly, 35% of the working poor have full-time jobs. Is that our societal pact? Isn't it supposed to be that if you work full-time and you work hard, you can provide for a family, a roof over their heads, shoes on their feet, and food on the table? And low wages aren't the only issue these working men and women face. 59% of them don't have health insurance at work, so they don't go to the doctor. And that leads to a 150% greater chance of their developing chronic health conditions that result in tremendous costs to taxpayers. Politicians talk about the jobs they're adding. 21.6 million are coming, and 20 million of those would be service jobs. And of all the job categories in the service sector, the fastest growth is in hotels and restaurants. Hotel Workers Rising is about much more than hotel workers. It's about our country. 50%, half of the lowest paying job categories are in hotels and restaurants. Do you know what the word median means? It's not the average. It means the midpoint. Half the hotel housekeepers make less than $8.17 an hour. Half the food servers make less than $8.08 an hour and half the dishwashers make less than $7.41 an hour. How can people live on those wages? They can't. Hotel Workers Rising is a movement of hotel workers in the top half, lifting up those in the bottom half. It is a movement for equality. In fact, profits for these three companies and the whole industry for 2005 exceeded the previous all-time record year of 2000. 2006 would be better still, that's a good thing. There is plenty of room for good profits and good jobs. For housekeepers, it's been really tough. Did you know that they have a quota of rooms they have to clean every day to keep their job? And that quota has to be met irrespective of the conditions guests might leave their room. And all those amenities, the coffee makers, the bathrobes, the six pillows, the triple sheeting, the heavy comforters, they add up to the time it takes to have a room ready for the next guest. Have room quotas been adjusted, or do housekeepers just have to work faster? They skip their breaks. They work through lunch. When their shift ends, they punch out, and then go back upstairs to finish their quota, to keep their job. Injury rates for hotel workers are 25% more than other service workers. Unions aren't very popular in the media. They aren't talked about as a real solution to poverty. But here are two facts. In cities where there are higher percentages of union hotels, wages are higher. And in places where there are fewer union hotels, wages are lower. Phoenix and New Orleans. Few union hotels and $7 and $8 wages. Boston and Chicago. Half of the hotels are union and wages are $11 and $12. San Francisco and New York where nearly all the hotels are union, hotel workers have good middle-class jobs. 
Like many industries, there has been tremendous consolidation. The big guys buying up the small guys. These big brand hotels have thousands of non-union workers. And when you look at the national averages, the non-union hotel workers are making around $7 an hour. The union hotel workers make twice that. Hotel Workers Rising is about workers organizing to lift one another above the poverty line, to make their jobs in this century equal in status and pay to manufacturing jobs of the 20th century. Some people might suggest that these wage differences are better explained by differences in hotel room rates in different cities. Well, in 2005, the average daily room rates in Boston and Miami were within pennies of each other. But the wage gap? It's dramatic. Look at Los Angeles and Phoenix. Same thing. Equal room rates, unequal wages. Unite Here did it in Las Vegas. There, the hotel workers have turned their jobs on the strip into good jobs. It wasn't easy. In fact, it took one of the longest successful strikes in the history of the labor movement. But read what the New York Times wrote. In most other cities, hotel workers live near poverty. In Las Vegas, these workers own homes, have health coverage, a solid pension plan, and three weeks vacation. These unionized women know what hotel workers rising means. It's their movement. They understand that the companies they work for will either bring everyone's wages up or bring everyone's wages down. In these cities and others across the two countries and an ocean, hotel workers would be negotiating new contracts in 2006. They work for the same corporations. They do the same work. They want to help every hotel worker rise out of poverty and into the middle class. They want equality. Their movement should be our movement.